Hello, uh, I'm, my name is Nick Huntington Klein, and welcome back to my series of videos on the effect. Uh, we're going to be continuing in this video to talk about describing relationships, how to describe the relationship between two variables. Now, in the last video, we talked about conditional distributions. Uh, so as the value of one variable changes, how does the distribution of the other one change? And if it does change, that tells you that those two variables are related. Uh, I also mentioned that that's, you know, still pretty complex, right? We, we've talked about distributions before, and we know that to really get across to somebody what's going on, you have to be able to summarize that distribution in some way. And the same thing is going to go for conditional distributions and relationships. If I want to really get across the idea of how X and Y are related to each other, I'm going to need something a bit more easy to understand. Uh, perhaps, for example, the conditional mean of Y as the value of X changes, right? I showed also one way to summarize that distribution by binning up X into different bins and looking at the average of Y within each of those bins. But that's a pretty sort of ad hoc kind of weird way to describe that. A more common way is to do something called line fitting. Uh, we're going to have a, some way of creating a line and that or a shape in some way that's going to describe the relationship between X and Y. Uh, you can look at the shape, you can plug in some value of X along the X axis, and then whatever value you see on the line that is going to describe the conditional mean of Y at that value of X, which is going to give us how the conditional distribution of, of y changes as you change the value of x. Straightforward enough. So how can we do this? How can we choose a shape that's going to help summarize this relationship for us? Uh, well, one thing we can do is we can take that same binning idea that we had before and just sort of make the bins a lot smaller. Uh, and that is what's going to be some, known as something called non-parametric regression, where we're just simply taking uh, values around a very narrow range and we're sort of asking what the average is in that range or doing some sort of adjustment uh, or calculation in that range. So let's say that we're looking at the relationship between uh, what your body mass index is and how much vitamin E you choose to take, right? Sort of continuing on from our example last time. Uh, so before I said, okay, well, what if your BMI is, let's say, between 10 and 15, right? That's a pretty wide range. What's the, a what, uh, the average amount of uh, vitamin E that you take or what's the proportion, perhaps, of vitamin E, people who take vitamin E in that range. Well, what if we make it a little bit narrower? So instead, uh, we'll go maybe from 11 BMI to 12, or maybe from 11.1 .1 to 11.2. We get these really narrow bins, and we sort of describe in that narrow bin uh, in, in maybe a way that's going to smooth things out. And that will give us one way of looking at the relationship between y, the conditional mean of y and x. As x changes, how does the conditional mean of y change? One way of doing this is what's called a low S curve, uh, which you can see here. And this is just simply, it's going to roll along that x-axis, and as it rolls along the x-axis, it's, it's going to keep calculating some, basically an average of y. It's going to do a little bit more complex than that, but that's the basic idea. It's getting the, trying to get the average of y within these little mini uh, moving at bins of x. And in doing so, you get this nice smooth relationship, and so we can see sort of a description of what this relationship is. And you can already see how a line is going to do a, a, a cleaner job of describing what's going on than maybe a bins are going to do. So here we can see that at low values of BMI, the proportion of people who take vitamin E grows rather quickly as the BMI goes up. So you go from like a BMI of 20 to a BMI of 22 or something like that, uh, you're going to see a lot more people taking vitamin E there. Uh, but then it sort of flattens out, right? Going from a 60 to a 62, which are pretty high values of BMI, uh, you don't see as much of a growth there. And, and we've summarized this relationship pretty well, right? Instead of having to understand what is the conditional, uh, like 18,000 different conditional means that we have to memorize to understand what's going on here, we can just sort of look at the shape. And the shape gives us an idea. It's upward sloping, so there's a positive relationship. Uh, it's steeper at first and then narrow, sh shallower later, so that sort of tells us a little bit more detail. Uh, and that's going to summarize this relationship for us. And that's one way that we can do it. However, maybe we might want to make it even a little bit more straightforward and easier to summarize. A very common approach to this is something called ordinary least squares or regre linear regression. Uh, and what this is, it's the same idea of trying to fit a line to describe this shape uh, or this relationship. But the difference is that we are going to uh, have to specify the shape ahead of time. We're going to decide what kind of shape it is as opposed to letting the data sort of give us some sort of shape. Now, why might we do this? Why might we want to impose some sort of shape on this relationship? Well, it's going to turn out that it's going to be a lot easier to summarize what's going on. We're going to be able to do it in simpler terms. We're going to lose a little bit of detail, but we're going to get a much more powerful way of describing the relationship. Uh, so that shape doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line, although often it is. We might say this relationship, we're going to see the best kind. We're going to, we're going to say this is going to be a straight line relationship. Uh, instead of this nice curvy line that we have for low S, we can, then we can just ask, well, what's the best straight line to fit? 
So here's how that might look. Here's the example of the ordinary least squares curve that we get, again, looking at the relationship between the proportion of people who take vitamin E and what their body mass index is. You can see that we've lost some detail. So instead of that curve that we had with the lowest, we instead have a straight line. Um, but uh, in doing so, we get a couple of different things. The first thing that we get is that this is going to be a much easier relationship to describe. So with the lowest curve, yeah, you could see it on the graph pretty well. And it was easy to say, okay, yeah, it's growing quickly at first and then it shallows out. Um, but reporting the values uh, that, that can describe that can be a little bit trickier. Or if you wanted to say something like, okay, well, as the value of X changes, what's going to change about the expectation of Y? It's a lot more sort of uh, detailed. It's not at quite as summarized as this straight line. With a straight line, you can very easily say something like, okay, a one unit change in body mass index is associated with a certain percentage point change in how many people take vitamin E. Very straightforward. In fact, we can write this out because it is a straight line. We can just write it out as a straight line with an intercept and a slope as we do it right here. So if I actually estimate the linear regression uh, straight line for this data, what I find is that I get that vitamin E, the proportion of people taking vitamin E is going to be 0 0.110, that's my intercept, plus 0 0.002 times BMI. So what do we mean by this? Uh, first of all, we can look at that 0 0.110, that's the intercept of a line. It works just like a regular line. If we plug in zero for BMI, if it were somehow possible to have zero uh, body mass index, uh, then we would predict that 11% of people would take vitamin E. Okay, great. Uh, and then it also we have a 0 0.002. And that's the real key value in ordinary least squares is that it tells us for one unit increase in the variable what changes about the outcome. So for every one unit increase in body mass index, we would predict that the conditional mean would increase by 0 0.002. That is a very neatly summarized relationship. Because uh, I can just say for any value of BMI, if it increases, then you would expect a certain size increase in vitamin E. That's the nice thing about a straight line, very easy to describe. Uh, well, ordinarily squares also has a lot of nice statistical properties that make it easy to work with. It's very easy, for example, to describe the sampling distribution of ordinarily squares coefficients in a way that's a bit harder uh, for a low S curve or something more flexible. Uh, also, because it simplifies things down, we do lose some detail, but it also means that we're going to do maybe a uh, we're not going to focus quite as much on noise. If you add too much detail to any statistical model, it tends to just get sort of noisy. And so there's a trade-off between having enough detail to capture all of the actual detail that's there uh, and not having so much detail that your data can't really support what you're doing. Uh, so simplifying a little bit, even if you do lose a little bit of detail, and we clearly had some, right, that curve has gone away, is might be worth it. Now that said, we are going to be able to fit a curvy line with linear regression. I'm not going to talk about that right now. In fact, there's a number of additional details with linear regression that we're not going to talk about until we get to chapter 13. And um, we'll cover stuff like, you know, fitting a curvy line, uh, how you can use it to replace all sorts of other things like comparisons of means or ANOVAs. Those are all just sort of special cases of regression. Um, but for now, the basic idea is we are fitting a line. Uh, this way that we can do it summarizes the relationship very neatly. And if we just look at that slope parameter, if that slope parameter is positive, that tells us that these two variables are positively related. Uh, if it's negative, that tells us that these two variables are negatively related in a linear uh, way pretty straightforward. This is also very closely related to the idea of a correlation. If you're familiar with correlation, uh, correlation is just a rescaled regression slope. That's it. Uh, regression is just when we when I say that a one unit increase in BMI is related to a 0 0.002 increase in vitamin E, which is how we can interpret that slope coefficient. Uh, I've said everything in the terms of units of BMI and units of vitamin E. If we took that out and just wanted to measure the strength of the relationship sort of generally, uh, we would get something without any sort of units, which would be a correlation, which goes from zero, from negative one to one. So to sum up what we have, uh, we want to be able to summarize the relationship between two variables. Uh, we want to know as the conditional value of one variable changes, how does the conditional distribution of the other change? And in particular, we might be interested in the conditional mean and how it changes. Uh, for different values of x, what is the conditional mean of y? There's lots of different ways to do this. Uh, one is a very flexible way called the low S curve, where we're sort of moving a rolling bin along, like we did bins before, but we're looking at each bin sort of one at a time. And within that bin, we're taking some sort of average or something similar to an average to get the average uh, of Y within the different bins of X. In other words, we're getting the conditional mean of Y, and we can flexibly describe the relationship that way. 
There are a lot of benefits also to choosing a particular shape, which helps, helps us summarize a little bit more concisely what that relationship is. Uh, linear regression is one way to do that. Uh, and that simply says we have a line. We have a straight line that we are going to put on this relationship and we're gonna pick the best straight line that we possibly can. It will have an intercept. Uh, and more importantly, it will have a slope. And that slope tells us as the X value changes, as we choose different conditional values of X, how does the conditional mean of Y change? That slope, and if, so a one unit increase in X is associated with whatever the slope is, that unit size change in Y. In the case of this regression that we had here, a one unit change in BMI is associated with a 0.002 change in the proportion of people taking vitamin E. One of the other benefits of regression is that it makes it very easy to add in what are called control variables to look for not just conditional distributions, but conditional conditional distributions. Uh, and that is something we will talk about in the next video. Hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Thank you.